What's up everybody? Welcome to Rotor Right Workbench. I'm Let's Fly RC, and today we're going to be assembling my signature frame, the tank. In the package you'll receive four 8mm arms. That's right, eight. A base plate, a mid plate, a top plate, two aluminum camera plates, a battery strap, a riot grip battery pad, a bag of video transmitter mounting screws, a bag of flight controller mounting screws, a bag of motor mounting screws, and a bag of frame assembly screws, four quad skids, a receiver mounting plate, two TPU camera mounts, and four TPU flight controller spacers. The first part of the frame assembly is to install the arms to the mid plate and base plate. Locate these parts and we'll begin. I like to begin by sandwiching the arms in between the base plate and the mid plate. This is the base plate and this is the mid plate. This is the front of the quad and this is the rear of the quad. This plate design is called a split deck design where the front and the rear are on two different plates and the arms lock them together. Let's empty out all of our frame assembly screws and organize them by length. In the package you should have two 25 millimeter standoffs, four 20 millimeter standoffs, four M3 by 18 millimeter screws, four M3 by 14 millimeter screws, four M3 by 12 millimeter screws, and 10 M3 by 8 millimeter screws. Be sure that the press nuts are facing upward when you're assembling this frame. The bottom of the mid plate does not show the press nuts. We're going to start by grabbing one of the longest screws and threading it into the base plate. Let's put it right in the rear, right there. Now take one of the arms and line it up in this orientation. It only fits one way so that the holes line up. So make sure that you have it set up so that the holes line up in the proper orientation. Slide the arm over the screw, take the top plate, line up the holes as well, and get that last screw lined up right about here. Once you get it lined up, take one of the 20 millimeter standoffs and lock it in place. Just put it on finger tight. Now we're gonna take one of the 14 millimeter screws and thread it through the other hole in the arm, which is right here. Wiggle the arm until it lines up. We're gonna loosely thread it finger tight into the mid plate press nuts. Now repeat the process with the other three arms, making sure to have the proper orientation and only thread the screws finger tight. Once you've got one arm in, the other arms will lock in place and you can just hold them in the center like this with your fingers and that'll heat them in place while you're putting the remaining screws in. The 12 millimeter screws go in the center and the 18 millimeter screws go towards the front and rear. When you get to this screw, using a two millimeter hex driver can help with this step. Just be careful not to thread it in too tight. We only want these finger tight and we definitely don't want to cross thread these aluminum plates. Line up the aluminum plate like this and loosely thread in the M3 by 18 millimeter screw. Make sure that it doesn't feel too tight as you're doing this because you might be cross threading and be very careful during this step. Now that that's finger tight, let's do the same thing to the other side. Now we can take two of the eight millimeter screws and thread them into the front of the aluminum camera plates. Again, be very careful not to cross thread them. If you need to, you can loosen up the rear screw to give you more flexibility with the front screw so that it's not cross threading. Again, at this stage, we're only threading these screws in finger tight. Now we can install the rear standoffs by using two more of the eight millimeter screws. Slide it up through the bottom of the mid plate and thread on your standoff finger tight. At this stage, it's always a good idea to install your flight controller stack screws and go ahead and solder up your flight controller stack because it's a lot more difficult to do once the frame is completely assembled. Since we're on this step, we'll go ahead and show you the flight controller stack screws. We'll just place these over here. In the flight controller stack screw bag, you'll have four M3 by 20 millimeter screws and 12 M3 nylon nuts for versatile mounting of your flight control stack. These will slide right up through the bottom of the arms and thread into the pre-installed press nuts of the mid plate. Repeat the process with the other three screws. If you're fortunate enough to be the only person ever to break an eight millimeter tank arm, it's really easy to pull out the arm without having to loosen up all of the screws on the bottom. And that's what's so great about this. This notch right here allows this flight controller stack screw to slide right past, eliminating the need to take out all of the bottom screws to loosen up your arm. And that's priceless, because when you're in the zone flying, you don't want it to take a long time for you to fix your drone. These nylon nuts can be used for spacing out your flight controller stack, depending on which one you choose. 
These four TPU stack spacers are made to go on top of the press nuts to allow the flight controller to have enough clearance to not touch the center press nuts. At this point, it's easiest to install the front action camera standoffs next. Line them up between the holes in the camera plates and install two 12 millimeter M3 screws. Again, we're only doing this finger tight at this point. And finally, let's take the last six screws and install them into our top plate. Finger tight. At this stage, what I like to do is go back through all of my screws one at a time and add thread locker to them and then torque them all down. We've waited until this point to add thread locker because it's a lot more difficult to add thread locker while you're assembling the frame and having to hold the pieces together. It's much easier to take the screws out one at a time, add thread locker, and put them back in. Used flight controller packaging is a great place to put your thread locker so that you can store it and not create a mess all over your bench. Dip it in your thread locker and reinstall the screw. Do that to all the screws that you've installed so far in the frame. Thread locker will help prevent the screws from loosening up and coming out during flight from vibration. I generally don't put thread locker on the top six screws because it's easier to access my electronics and they don't generally vibrate out in flight. After you've got thread locker on all your screws, tighten down all of your screws one more time in an X pattern. And that will ensure the Loctite does its job. The frame comes with two TPU camera mounts, which are intended for all camera systems other than the DJI 03 system. And you can purchase the DJI 03 FPV system camera kit separately. These two camera mounts have an L and an R to indicate left and right. Left will go on the left side and right will go on the right side with the drone facing forward. If you place them in the proper orientation, the screw holes will line up perfectly so that the camera can tilt at the proper angle. It should look like this when finished. Just slide the TPU camera mount into the inside and lock it in place, lining it up with the aluminum camera mounts, just like that. They should squeeze in place and allow you to slide your camera right in between them and screw them in place with M2 screws that come with the camera system. The receiver plate and video transmitter screws are also provided to help you mount your electronics in the rear of this frame. In the back of the frame, you have 20 by 20 and 25 by 25 mounting options, which are perfect for today's video transmitter systems. The bag of screws has four 20 millimeter M2 screws and eight M2 nylon nuts. Line them up to the 25 by 25 pattern or the 20 by 20 pattern, depending on your needs. Slide them through from the bottom and install the nylon nut on top. You can use the nylon nuts to lock the receiver plate in place if you think it's gonna help you in your build process. I don't generally use this piece, but I provided it just in case it helps you to space your receiver or your video transmitter accordingly. When using our quad skids to mount your motors, this bag provides the perfect length screws for most motors to ensure proper mounting of your motors. Simply slide one screw into the quad skid, position the quad skid on the bottom of the arm in your orientation of choice, line up the screw with the hole, pass it through, and screw in your motor. You should have the perfect length to go into most motors to where it won't damage the windings and it won't be too short to where it doesn't provide adequate mounting strength. Always be sure to double check to make sure the screw doesn't pass through and crush the windings on your motors, but this should be perfect for almost all motors. The final two pieces are the battery strap and battery pad. The tank frame includes a riot grip battery pad and a rotor riot battery strap. Since it's easier to install the battery pad first, we'll do that first. This should provide enough riot grip for multiple uses. Line it up between the slots in the top plate and cut out a square to fit the space. Peel off the adhesive backing and stick it in place. Make sure your rotor right logo faces the right direction. Then you can peel off the clear protecting film before installing your battery. I'm just gonna put that back on here for now to protect it while we put the battery strap on. To install the battery strap, thread it through the back slot with the rotor right logo facing up, push it forward, and up through the front slot. This larger slot is also where your battery cable will come through, and it's the perfect size to allow an XT60 connector to pass right through. Pull your battery strap tight to where your buckle is flush with the back of the frame, loop it through the buckle and around over the top, and line up the Velcro, press in place. And that's how you build my signature frame, the tank. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Let us know in the comments which video system you chose to use for your tank build. I'm Les Flair C, and we'll see you next time on Rotor Riot Workbench. <laughs>